Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Karen Lavender Clothesline. And as you can tell from the traffic out my window, I am on the road this morning. Today is Tuesday and Tuesday is usually my big sourcing day. I'm sitting at a traffic light. That's why I'm talking to you guys and looking at the camera. I don't know if you can tell I'm looking at the camera, but today we are on the road. I am hoping to hit probably two or three thrift stores. And this time of year, mid-October, I saw start my retail arbitrage hunting for the Christmas holiday season. So hopefully I will be able to bring the camera into different stores with me or wherever I wind up. You never know where with me, where this car is going to leave me, but I'm hoping more and more to bring you different places that I source from. Now, as many of you know, I have filmed Pottery Barn. I have filmed some mom and pop thrift stores and I am driving now, so I will not be looking at the camera. I hope you guys don't mind, but I am a really cautious driver. So this morning I shipped out all kinds of craziness. This was Columbus Day weekend. My sales were a little bit slower, but my profit per item was quite high. I still have to figure it out, but I sold quite a few things for over $100. I did sell the carved antlers by Russ, somebody or another, I should know this. I'll try to put a screenshot in here. They were deer antlers carved into an eagle head, just gorgeous. Those I did not get from a Goodwill or a thrift store. Those I got at the auction house at um, Farmersville Auction, and I filmed finding those. So, great sale. I believe I paid $20 for them, and they sold last night for $249. So, really glad that they're going to somebody who loved them, and I think might be a viewer. So, hello out there if you're the one that bought the rust somebody I have a horrible memory lately too much detail you know my memory is changing I'm finding but I really don't think it's because I'm getting older I think it's because I'm trying to stuff more stuff in there okay so enough chit chat thank you so much for following my channel please hit the like and subscribe button it really helps me out a lot and give me a thumbs up and always leave a comment down below change lanes here a comment down below on what you guys are finding I would love to hear how your sales are and if you are finding high profit dollar items that you're selling all right more later hopefully I'll be able to bring you into the stores so I have made it to three stores today and this is the first one of course the main Goodwill where I go right down the white aisle because I am in serious shopping mood today. Just a little disclaimer, I did fill my car and I'm not sure which items I caught finding, but I'm gonna try to show you what is on the shelves. Now today the shelves were quite crowded, so it was very hard to see what I was looking at, but I'm gonna give you a little peek of what kind of things I'm finding. Here I found a handmade wall pocket. Now while I do like to pick up wall pockets that are well made, I didn't feel like that one was very well made, but Good for the person for trying. Out of most sets of dishes, I find that the sugar and creamer and the serving ware, I'm gonna call it platters, serving bowls, will bring the best sale the quickest. So while I don't pick up a lot of dishes, whole sets, famous less words, because I just picked up a 98 piece set, I do look at most sugar and creamers. Sugar and creamers, in my opinion, are probably the quickest seller out of most sets when you piece them out. I thought this piece was quite odd. <laughs> just a baby hand holding a mother's hand and blushed pink a little bit. This was a random box of white pieces of, it wasn't even China. I'm not quite sure what this was. Now it did say Oneida, but it really seemed like a random mix. So I'm not quite sure what that was. I did get to the store as one of the first people in the store, but this location, this is the Lancaster location, gets crowded quite quickly.
I thought this might have been like a little music box. That's why I turned it over. And it was interesting, but I didn't think either one of these pieces was well done enough. I look for very finely hand-painted items when I'm looking at those types of trinket boxes, music boxes. Here I'm struggling to get a coach <laughs> eyeglasses case open. For some reason, there were a lot of new bras in package on this shelf. I also am finding greeting cards here. I have done very well with greeting cards, very large lots. Most of the times though, guys, they've been vintage that, you know, that it brought good money. So I think people really relate to or remember, you know, the different patterns and just the different graphics of vintage cards. But I always take a quick peek to see if there are any vintage cards uh, mixed in with the greeting cards. This Neutrogena shampoo uh, seemed to be brand new, healthy scalp. Now this could have been a mistake on my part. You could see it's $1.99. I did put this in my cart, but right after I filmed, I lost camera battery or phone battery, I should say. So I had to put my phone out in my car to charge and never got to look up that shampoo and wound up putting that back. And we are on to the brown aisle. Here was a Williams Sonoma cutting board or cheese board. I have picked these up before, but this is monogrammed. So while I do put this in my cart to think about it, it has the letter G on it. And I realize, you know, that it's going to be pretty tough to find the right buyer who not only wants a Williams Sonoma cheese board, but also that their name begins with a G. But I did think about that for a while because I do like the Williams Sonoma brand. and always checking baskets. Here I'm showing you the large lot of cheap bras. Now they are new, but they wanted $7 a bra in package and the brand did not command that kind of money. I thought this mug was good. <laughs> I wanted to buy it. It was a Canadian triathlon mug. I know, how specific is that? So I did, I did leave that behind. Not to say I'm not picking up any single mugs. Ugh, I think mugs are my slowest seller. I try not to pick up a lot of ceramics or pottery that are this color or brown. Uh, not too much black going on either. Now here right away I find a pretzel dish or a pretzel bowl. This was a wooden outer uh, housing and it had the insert and both were in very good condition right in the cart. I believe that's true mid-century modern and I was thrilled to find that. I kind of hoped they had the peanuts one. I thought that would be really cool, you know, if people had like a finished 1950s basement. I pictured the whole scene. <laughs> That was a very big apple. Quite often when I'm going up and down the aisles, I just zoom in on pieces to entertain you guys. Like I knew that pig, that laying down pig, probably would not bring any money, but I feel like you guys want to shop with me, so you might want to see things even if I'm not going to purchase them. I try to zoom in. Here I'm finding a welcome slate. So I have picked up slates um, anytime. Is that a word, slates? I have picked up slates anytime they have a really cute, uh, well-painted front. And this was little kittens on a watermelon. I thought that was really sweet. No pun intended. And I do wind up buying that one. 
So even though I was only able to film in this one store today, I was at the outlets and at a third store. Hopefully my next video will be the haul, the collective haul, and I'll show you what I picked up. I had a trunk load today. A lot of clothing, which was great because I haven't been picking up too much clothing and quite a bit of hard goods. What else did I get? All kinds of craziness. On Instagram, I showed a few pieces to give a spoiler and uh, so go over and check my Instagram, Lavender Clothesline, if you want a sneak peek of what I picked up. Here I jumped over to clothing. I'm looking at skirts. Now I do look at the full floor, the full inventory of clothing every time I go to any thrift store. A lot of times I don't show it because here in Pennsylvania, like I've told you guys before, I don't find as much clothing as other states. Long Island had quite a bit of clothing. Not to say that it was easy to find high-end brands, but here we have real mall brands. Nothing really that thrilling. A couple of times I find a good piece, like today I think I came home with a rack and a half. And I'll try to show some of that in the haul, the more interesting pieces. But I figured you guys might want to peek to see what the clothing racks look like in this Goodwill. There's Marona, which is Target. Most uh, department stores or, um, you know, box stores have in-house brands and it's good to learn those brands. I think my area is saturated with Ann Taylor. I think most areas are saturated with Ann Taylor. I look for Ann Taylor Retail, the black label. Not to say I don't pick up loft. I probably have quite a bit of loft in my store, but I have to buy in at a really low price or find super cute styles. Here I'm just breezing over what's on the rack. Okay, here we are jumping back to hard goods. I figured you guys want the full experience of how I shop, jumping back and forth. Now I wasn't quite sure what this is. I have seen placemats and table runners made out of bamboo or reeds, but these twigs or sticks were especially different. They were very even and I wasn't quite sure what this was, but I did want to take a look at it. I wound up putting that back and another buyer picked it up right after me. So I was glad to see somebody, you know, really gravitate towards it right away. Today was a very fun day in the stores. I saw lots of friends and met lots of new friends. I always love doing that. I love when you guys come up to me and say, hey, are you Karen Lavender Clothesline? It does make me feel a little awkward, but I love meeting people. It's always a joy to find out what you guys are doing. And I love when you guys introduce yourselves to me. Sometimes they even meet your children and um, it's it just makes the whole day so much more enjoyable because my day is long. I was out this morning probably by 8.30, 8 or 8.30, I think I was on the road. Here I'm looking at a ceramic leaf. I didn't think this was really a high dollar, you know, value flip, but I do put this in my cart because I felt that it was painted and glazed very well. I guess that caught my eye. It was just a little sequin, uh, looked like maybe a headband. I realize I don't see too many brass teapots. That might have been a mistake that that teapot, uh, that I left that behind. Both these pieces were quite unique and it drew my attention, but brass in my store, some things sell through quickly, like I do well with candlesticks, um, wall art like I recently showed, you know, like the swags of leaves or butterflies, but um, some breast pieces take quite a while. I do well with frogs, turtles, uh, a lot of figurines, deer, if they're well done, but not teapots, I don't think. I thought this poor kitty needed help. He needed a kitty hospital. <laughs> he needed to be repainted. Now this Goodwill is just putting out everything. I, I actually saw taco shells on the shelf today. Yep, packaged taco shells. 
I don't even know if that's legal for them to sell them, but they were there. And here I'm seeing a Lego box. I did take a look at it, but it didn't seem like uh, this was the full set. So I'm really not into counting Legos and I left it behind. Could have been a mistake. There was a lot of dish soap and shampoo on the shelves today. I guess there must have been a donation by a store. There was some cleaner, I actually saw paper towels. Uh, most of it was priced quite high. You could almost get it cheaper in Target if it was on sale. Here I'm finding stone coasters. But again, I don't know that that would bring, you know, very high dollar amount. These were either placemats or pillow shams. And that was not a brand that I um, gravitate towards. I thought these candlesticks were really pretty. They weren't marked, so I believe they were made in China. And like I said, these shelves are just so crowded with a lot of trash, in my opinion. A lot of this stuff, I think, should be either sent to the outlet or, um, I don't, I'm not quite sure, I hate to say thrown into the landfill, but a lot of junk on the shelves lately. Here's a Nikon camera bag, and I did run comps on this. This would probably bring anywhere from 12 to $17, and they wanted $3. I did think about it, but the market is very saturated with camera bags. Now here I'm looking through the camera and I see this iridescent dish and I realize that this is flash painted, so I picked this up to show you guys how I look at um, dishes or plates that I think are flash painted. I hold them up to the light and there you can see a chip of the paint and I put it back. I would not have bought that anyway. I was just showing you guys how I look at uh, pieces to see if they're flash painted or not. Here again, holding a bowl up to the light this was, the glass was green. This was not flash painted. This tray was beautiful. I think this might have been vintage. I did not peel the sticker off. <laughs> As I was saying in one of the other videos, my nails are shot from peeling off labels in the store. I do have Scotty peelers at home that I use, but I don't use a Scotty peeler in the store. I really don't have time for that with holding the camera, trying to source for myself. Could you picture if I was <laughs> whipping out a Scotty peeler out of my handbag to peel the stickers off of the brands? That would be quite funny. This was Pier 1 Imports, this cookie jar, and I did not pick it up. And here I'm finding Mrs. Bunny. I don't know if any of you remember her, but I had seen her on the shelf sitting by herself last time I was in Goodwill, or last time I filmed, and I went and found Mr. Bunny and reunited them. <laughs> So here Mr. and Mrs. Bunny are sitting on the top shelf. Hopefully they will be bought together and enjoy living in someone's house. So this is a still shot of them. Really sweet. I don't know who makes these rabbits, but I thought that they were so sweet and so cute. They deserve to live on the Goodwill shelf together underneath the glow. <laughs> we're pretending it's glowing of a chandelier lamp. So that ends this portion of the video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Stay tuned for a High Profit Thrift Finds episode. For those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, Lavender Clothesline, I do post quite a bit over there of items that I'm finding that are really hopeful to bring high dollar amount. And a lot of times I post my solds to show you what kind of money certain items are bringing. So I thought I'd leave you with this 
this photo, it was a strange coincidence right after I reunited the fake bunnies on the shelf, I finished up my shopping and got online. And standing behind me was a mom and two children, and this woman was holding this bunny in a cup she found. And it says, some bunny loves you. And right away I thought this was a stuffed animal that she had found on the shelf and put into the mug, you know, to buy together. And then I saw this rabbit move. This was her pet bunny. For some reason, the family brought it to the store and carried it around. And she found this mug and carried the bunny in the mug. So <laughs> I thought this was hysterical for crazy things you see at Goodwill. I might even start a series and take snapshots of the crazy things that I see while thrifting. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours. Here is another episode of High Profit Thrift Finds. These are items that bring a higher price than what we would expect or items that bring just a higher price <laughs> and are a great surprise. So let's get started. This first item I did show on Instagram and I believe I talked about in a video, but I wanna make sure that everybody appreciates how beautiful this is. This is a carved antler. I believe it was a deer antler. And this is by Russ Hill, who is the son of Stan Hill. I believe Stan Hill did Iroquois carvings and I'm not sure if these gentlemen were Native Americans or they did carvings in the style or in the technique of Iroquois Indians. But nonetheless, I did bid on this at a recent auction. I won it for $30 and here I'm showing it sold for $244.30. So thrilled that this is appreciated. Next up is not really a high dollar amount, but for a used pair of shoes, I feel this is worth mentioning. This is Allegra, and if you're not familiar with this brand, you want to be. Consistently, Allegra brings the money for me, especially for a pre-owned shoe, $43.40, and I believe I paid $5 for these. Next up is Birkenstock. We all love Birkenstock. This is a pair of all wool slippers that I recently found, made in Germany, 6160. Pre-owned slippers, you gotta love that. Next up is a gorgeous Tiffany style lampshade, but I do warn against using the word Tiffany. Tiffany is a branded name and eBay frowns on us using a Vero copyrighted name. So I try my best never to use Tiffany style, even though this is obviously a Tiffany style lampshade. This was just for the shade, $117.60. I did find this in a thrift store. I believe I paid $6. $6.97 or $7.97. Next up is a wool hat. Now the reason I bring this up is the minute I listed this, lots of attention. This is a buffalo plaid wool hat. People really like this style. $29.40 and again guys, pre-owned hat. Most times in a thrift store, you're not going to pay more than maybe $2 or $3 for a hat. So I always look at the hats. Here are two coins that are a little bigger than a regular coin would be, and these are souvenir coins. Most people pass these up. I try to run a quick comp, but most times if it is a famous birthday or a famous event, I go ahead and pick them up. I believe I paid $2 for these and they brought $36. Here is a sweater. I'm sure we all see items like this in the thrift store. I always judge these sweaters by how big the logo is. The bigger, the better with logos. $54.60 and it's a pre-owned sweater. Next up is a gorgeous sculpture or statue. And the reason I show this is two reasons. Number one, it's quite large. Well, really three reasons. Number two, this had a flaw. It had a crack in it and the buyer did note it. It was noted in my listing. In other words, I'm trying to say $132.30 for a plastic statue everybody else was passing up because it had a crack. I felt this was too beautiful and I went ahead and purchased it. Truthfully, I'm trying to remember what I paid for this. Um, I believe I paid under $10, I think $6.97. 
Next up is just a wooden bucket. Now you say 4062 is not really a high profit, but it is because these buckets are like souvenir buckets. But when a bucket like this can be called folk art, I go ahead and pick it up, $40.62. Next up, I know we all know this brand, UGG, and the reason I'm showing this is number one, it's a pre-owned hat that got $57.85. Again, hats you don't pay a lot for. And number three is anytime I see sheepskin and shearling on the same item, I go ahead and run a comp. So while coats are heavy to ship, hats are light to ship, and the money is there if you see that combination. But it really has to be clean and in good condition because in my opinion, if it's very dirty, a dry cleaning might kill the profit. This is a dress I've been wanting to talk about this style for a while with you guys. I feel a lot of people don't realize the profit capability with these dresses. These dresses are always vintage, they're 80s or 90s, and they fit into the style of grunge boho. So a few things that you would want to look for to be able to identify these dresses are the following aspects. Most times these dresses are 100% rayon. A lot of times they have shoulder pads and a lot of times they are buttoned down, most times floral. So look for those four things all That Jazz is a quite popular brand in this style. I think young people really like this style with a pair of combat boots. Most times the style is a midi. It comes to the lower calf. Here I believe this one might have been a maxi. To tell you the truth, I don't even remember. 3802 for a dress that almost everybody will pass up on the clothing rack. And here, I'm sure you guys are tired of this sale. This is 48 Chinese gambling tokens. I didn't even know what these were when I picked them up. Found them at a yard sale for a dollar. And I think we all know what Chinese gambling tokens are. They're made of mother of pearl, $113 and I paid a dollar. This next item, I have mentioned items like this before. These are Woolrich vintage coats. So whenever I find a Woolrich vintage item, especially in coats, whether they be tartan plaid or they have something special about them, they're almost always 100% wool, so be careful to check for moth holes. This one had a gorgeous red satin lining that was in very clean condition. When you find coats like this, especially the vintage ones, always check the armpits to make sure they're not stained because if it's a satin lining, um, that's almost impossible to get out. And the last item that I want to show and celebrate is this gorgeous painting. I think this is my most beautiful find lately. This is hand done. It's an artist signed picture, $138.60, and I paid $2 at a yard sale. So that is another episode of High Profit Thrift Finds. Thanks again for hanging out with me. Please hit the like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours. <music>